Have you ever been on a property viewing, got back into your car and then thought, oh, damn, I forgot to ask about so-and-so. Or perhaps you've taken a phone call from an estate agent months and months after a viewing and they want to know whether your office still stands, but you can't remember a single thing about the place. Well, I can help. This week, I'm gonna share with you a really easy way that you can go and track your property viewings so that you'll never need to worry about forgetting something ever again. Hello and welcome. I'm Andy Gore, a real estate investor and coach. I'm here to help you systemize your real estate business so that you can free up your time to focus on what's most important to you. Viewings are an important part of real estate investing, but if you're doing more than just a handful, I'd recommend putting some form of system in place. That's what I'm gonna cover in today's video, including how to create a new viewing record, including using Notion templates and template buttons, how to go and actually use the Notion template as if you were on an actual viewing, and then lastly, how to go and manage your viewing records, so from the past, the present, and the future. Plus, I've got an advanced bonus tip coming up about how to use your viewing records within your property records in Notion. Ocean. So do make sure you stay tuned for that as well. Timestamps for each section are down in the description. So if you do want to hop about, um, then feel free. And lastly, what's the most important thing that you've forgotten when going on a property viewing? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear. So the first thing to do is to add a new viewing into Notion. So I'm currently here on my viewings dashboard um, and I've got various uh, navigation areas which we'll come to a bit later. But you'll see at the top I've got add new viewing. So I'm just going to click onto that one uh, and that brings us to the viewings database with various columns. So I'm going to quickly whiz through each of these to explain what they do. So the first thing is a viewing ID and I like to give uh, each viewing just some form of number um, just to keep track of them and know which one we're referring to. So let's just call that one number five. Uh, next up is you'll see that it's actually filled in here, the viewing name with viewing template. Um, and that's because I've got actually a predefined um, set of information that I used uh, whenever I create a new record. And the way to go and see that is if I go to this right hand side where we've got new and we've got a little drop down, you can see that I've actually got a viewing template here that's set as default. So if I click these three dots, it says set as default. And if I go edit, we can see that we put in the name viewing template and the status is to be booked. So we would expect that for our uh, a new record in the viewing database. Underneath, we've also got some notes. So we've got stuff on the viewing, uh, a picture gallery and things to do after the viewing. Um, now, I won't go into these uh, just yet. I'll go into those in part two, all about actually using this template during a real viewing. Um, but that's the template. So if I just click off that, that's why it's pre-populated the viewing name with viewing template. So let's just go and rename that. So let's call this a brand new house name. So this is number 20, um, the road. Um, let's go and give it a postcode. Great. Um, so that's the viewing name. Uh, then we've got a property and you'll see this has got a little arrow beside it. And that means that it's a relation property. So that's actually relating this viewing database to a different database. Now I know that there's not a property with this name, so I'm just gonna click in here, and rather than selecting one in the list, I'm gonna go and type in this to add a new property. So the road, great. So I've typed that in, click new, and that's now added that into the property uh, database. To be booked, that's already selected. Uh, viewing number, now sometimes we may do multiple viewings of the same property. So this is just gonna be the first viewing we've done. Uh, then we've got the date and time. So sometimes we may know that we want to make a viewing, but we can't get through to the estate agent or we need to go and phone them later. Um, so we can just leave that blank for the minutes. Uh, then next up is the estate agent. So estate agent, again, is a relation property. So here are just some test people I've got. So let's say we're gonna uh, go and do this with Bob Smith. And then you'll see that these last two columns have automatically filled themselves out and they've got these little magnifying glasses here. Now, those are actually roll up properties, which means that it grabs this information from the estate agent database and pre-populates it into here for us. So we don't need to type these in, um, it just pulls it from Bob Smith and we know that he's associated with the bestseller agency and we also know that this is his uh, phone number. So I've put in the estate agent and then let's say we've now gone and confirmed that we want to go and use, uh, we're gonna go and do this viewing on the, uh, let's say the 16th um, of March, uh, include time, we'll tick that one. And let's say it's gonna be uh, two o'clock in the afternoon. Now our viewing's booked in, we're ready to go and use the template when we actually go on the viewing. So uh, I'm currently here uh, in my add new viewing. So if I jump down to the viewing uh, diary, we can see we've got our viewing here booked in for Thursday. 
and you can actually select in Notion the various properties that you want to display. So I've selected the status and the property itself, the name of the agent, their phone number, and the actual date and time, etc. So that's a really useful way to be able to quickly go and see what you've going on uh, at a certain point in time. So let's imagine that it was now Thursday um, and we wanted to go and add some notes as we wander around the house. So if I open this record, uh, we can see we've got our template and all these various sections filled out. So if I quickly show you around these, so under the viewing area, uh, I've got these uh, toggles to cover the external, the internal parts of the property, and then also maybe some questions for the uh, estate agent. So if I just click uh, external first, this has got all pre-populated comments and prompts and areas to remind you of things that you may want to check out when you're going around the property. So as I said at the start, sometimes it's really easy to forget things. Um, so by using this template, it just saves you a load of time um, and, and things that you may forget uh, if you were to try and do it from memory. And we can see, for example, um, we've got um, what's the roof made from? So we could just say that this is a tile roof. Are there any cracked or missing tiles? And um, there are three near the uh, front. Um, for example, um, are there any blown bricks? Um, condition of the pointing, windows and doors. These could be single glazed. Um, for example, um, the garden, so the garden condition could be um, well looked after and you can just add just some really simple comments etc. Um, what's the boundary type, let's just say it's fence and the boundary condition is uh, in need uh, of repair. So just as you wander around, just add a few notes, um, et cetera, um, for the external condition of the property on your viewing. And we've got similar for the internal. So again here, uh, is there any smell of damp? What are the state of the electrics? Um, the walls, so we could say that the uh, walls are, um, let's just say paint. Um, the flooring, uh, let's say in the corridors, the flooring is uh, wood uh, laminate. Then you can see we've actually got this, uh, this section here which says new bedroom with a little plus sign. Now this is actually a template button because clearly different properties will have different numbers of bedrooms. And so if I just go and uh, click on this, you can see that it comes out with this section of information. So we've got the bedroom number. So let's say this is bed one, let's say it's the first floor and let's say it's uh, right at the top of the stairs for example. Um, and then we can go and add the relevant bits of information about bed one. But then we may have another bedroom. So literally I can just click new bedroom again and it'll add another bedroom record uh, in. So let me quickly show you how to go and configure one of these. Firstly is if you want to go and uh, create one, if you just use the forward slash and then just type template, you'll see it comes up with template button. So if I click on that, it comes up with this little pop-out window here. So the first thing to do is to give our um, template button a name. So let's just call this, I don't know, uh, bedroom. Um, new bedroom, like we've got before. Cool, new bedroom. Uh, and then we've got the body of this. Now this can be as complicated as you want. So it could be just a checklist. So we could put in here um, windows, and then we could put um, uh, flooring. Um, just to make sure that you're checking them, uh, light uh, fitting. Um, but you could also add in here um, toggles. So we could have a toggle. Um, we could put in bullet points. Um, so no, as much detail as you want, we just go and put it all into the body here of the template button. And then once we're done, we just click close. And you can see now we've got a template button that says new bedroom. And if I click on it, it's now gone and added all of our checkboxes, the toggle, um, bullet points, uh, etc. So it can be really, really complicated. It's very powerful. Um, and then that just stays within this record. So when you create your original template, so as I said earlier, we've got our template here for the records. So just go and create any of the template buttons that you want. So you can see here the new bedroom uh, lives in there. Um, so just go and create all of the template buttons with all of the various prompts um, and, and information that you want. Um, and then that will then go and be recreated each time you create a new viewing record. So it's a um, Notion is brilliant for this. So definitely go and check it out. Then if we just go back to our viewing, we've got other, other various sections. These are just an example for yourself. So go and put in the type of detail prompts, questions that you want. So for example, here I've got stuff on the bathroom, uh, the gas meter, the electricity meter, um, the consumer unit, etc. Um, so that covers the uh, internal viewing. Um, and then we may want some typical prompts for the estate agent. So for example, why is the seller um, selling? Um, what's their situation? So it could be um, divorce, um, quick sale um, required. 
Um, and then how long has the property been on the market? So let's just say um, three months, um, two offers rejected. And quite often um, you'll get more information out of the estate agent when they're alone uh, in a property rather than speaking to them in the office where they may have colleagues who are uh, earwigging. And then just another thing is you've also got here the picture gallery. Um, so if you take loads of photos you may want to actually fill out the viewing information uh, when you get home and you can just take loads of pictures. And another part of Notion you can just go and grab them off your computer or off your phone, drag them into here and then you'd have self-contained within this record all of the property pictures which you can then refer to in six months time as I said where you get that phone call from an estate agent and you need to just go and remind yourself of what the property was all about. I really hope you're finding this video useful. Would you mind giving it a thumbs up? Thanks. So once we've been on our viewing, we then just need to go and manage each of our viewing records. Now clearly some properties after the viewing will want to reject as uh, so we can go and just archive them. Other ones we may want to go and get in contact with the agent, we may have more questions um, or we may just want to go and put them into a follow-up pile for a future date. Um, and I use a couple of different views in Notion to do that. Um, so firstly I've got this to review section here. And this is after the viewing, I may want to go over my notes, may want to flesh it out a bit. Um, so I've just got a list here um, and we can see that this is a, the status is to review, uh, when the date was, the agent, phone numbers, etc. So I can quickly jump into this record, uh, go and add a few notes um, and then uh, update it here. So let's say that it's going to be uh, complete, for example. Um, or I may want to go and look at the sort of flow of each of our uh, viewings and I've used here something called a board view. If you want to know more about board views I've got information in my Notion playlist um, so I'll chuck a link uh, above and in the description below. Here I've got each of the various sections so I've got viewings that need to be booked, viewings that have been booked, um, then uh, viewings that are to review and then either completed or cancelled. This is another way just to keep tabs um, on each of your viewings uh, to make sure that you, you know what state they're in and whether anything needs to be done. Plus remember that Notion can also be used um, with other people. So if different people are doing different things around your viewings, uh, you can share this page or this area with them and they can also go and log in um, and, and update the records as needed. So let's say for example, 3-2 on the road, um, that's to review. We could just nudge that along there. And then 1-2-3 coach road, we viewed it, didn't think much of it. So we can just take that to uh, cancelled. Oh, just take that to cancelled. At the start of the video, I mentioned that I was gonna share with you a bonus tip about how to go and use your viewing records within your property ones. And this is a bit more advanced. So uh, let me show you how this works. If I go back to my sourcing dashboard um, and here we've got our property leads. Um, so let's just go and have a look at a new property lead. So if I go add new property lead, cool. And this is our properties um, properties dashboard and database. So if I go uh, into the template for a new property lead and I go edit, we can see that under here, I've got uh, the deal summary, I've got the communication history, um, and then I've got a link to the viewing record. Now, if I just delete this, let me show you how to do this. So if I click um, forward slash, and then I want to use a linked view and then uh, type linked and I want to go to the viewing record, all right? Um, and then just click table. What this is doing is within a new property record, it's pulling in viewings. So we clearly don't want to see all of the viewings from all of the different properties. So I need to go and filter this database. Um, so I'm currently here actually in the template for properties. So if I go here, filter, um, we want to filter by the actual property itself. So I'm gonna click here, property. Um, and it's going to list all of the different properties that we have, but I don't want a specific property. I actually want to use this top one, which is the name of the template. So it's a bit confusing, but if I just click add new property, this is also the name of the template itself. And what this means is that every time we create a new property record, it will automatically fill in that property within the viewing record. So let me give you a quick demo. So I'm currently, um, I've got the add new property leads. So I'm just gonna click here, uh, new, and let's just call this something really, really obvious. So new test property for demo, all right? Um, so I've gone and added that name. And let's say that we know that we're gonna go on a viewing on this uh, straight away, so immediately. So I'm gonna make this full screen. Um, and let's just click here, new. And you can see that straight away that the property in here has been filled out because we are within the property name here which is new test property for demo um, and it's done that because we selected the template within the reference 
Um, so this is a little bit confusing, um, but it's a really, really clever way that every time we create a new property record, it will then automatically populate the name of the property when we create a new viewing. Okay, so I'd watch that a couple of times, make sure that you understand how it works, um, but it can be really, really powerful so that here, we're now gonna have a nice list of viewings, um, all self-contained within the property. Um, so I could say, right, we've been on viewing number one. Um, that went really, really well. I'm just gonna go on a second viewing. Again, if I click new, um, here, the property straight away, again, has got the name populated because we're doing it within the property record. So yeah, a really powerful point uh, of uh, Notion. And then you can add your usual um, pictures and, and after viewings and all that sort of thing. Notion's a brilliant piece of software and I highly recommend it for real estate. If you've enjoyed this video, then do go and check out this video here, where I go into five more ways that Notion can be used to manage your real estate business. But other than that, thanks so much for joining me. Have a brilliant rest of your day and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. See ya.